Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is David Cumming and it is Wednesday the 2nd of April 2014. I've just got to do a little video about what I saw in the papers today because what I do in the morning, I go down early and I have a coffee and I look at the Times and the Mail and this helps put, the, you know, you can just put the world, put things into context a little bit with that. See what they're up to. I read the Times because of course historically according to um, the book, the big book Tragedy and Hope is connected to the Royal Institute of International Affairs, and you can tell that anyway with the content, the Times, you know, with all its globalism that it pushes, its UN Agenda 21 that it pushes. I think one of the headlines today was all about fracking. You know, one of the leader articles about fracking, how wonderful it is. Talk about fracking in a second. Anyway, so I was looking in the Times, and you see, uh, but I think this one actually, there was an article on this, but I can't find it, so I've got it on here. Right here, and I found it in the Daily Mail, but it's also mentioned in the Times. Ar I think it's in the Times as well. Archbishop Welby's son given a plum job by Blair. Now, oh, so Archbishop Welby. Now, of course, he's the Archbishop in charge of the Church of England, which I describe as uh, one of the en Satan's favourite engines of deception, to get people away from the truth, to talk about communitarianism. You only have to go to a local church and look at all the language of communitarianism and all their little leaflets, all the sustainability, you see it coming up all over the place, and these global initiatives all the time. And, um, yeah, Archbishop Welby, well, not surprisingly, is Archbishop, he's an ex all man, isn't he? Probably knows about as much as a connection with God, or probably understands the true connection with God, as much as a pair of pliers will understand it. But anyway, of course, his son has been given a plum job by Blair. There's a picture here in the newspaper. If you want, if you want to go and uh, type this in, Archbishop Welby's son given plum job by Blair. And you see a nice picture of Archbishop Welby's son there. And uh, then when you go to the, um, you can consider the Faith, Faith Foundation, which is Tony Blair's Faith Foundation. Here's a quote from it. They've got this thing called the Faith and Globalization Initiative with Blair. Blair wanted for war crimes where many people wanted to certainly for lying. I think it's pretty unequivocal evidence, isn't it, that he's a liar and he brought a load of people, you know, he's involved with the, the destruction of Iraq and um, pretends to have faith. Faith in what? I don't know. So maybe he's not pretending, but he pretends to have faith in the God that you and I would uh, like to be connected with, of course. But anyway, it's here is the Faith and Globalisation Initiative. This is part of the Faith Foundation, you know, Tony Blair's one. Tony Blair associated with faith, my goodness me. Anyway, this one is here, the Faith and Globalisation Initiative. It's a global network, of course. You've got to have the networks, you've got to have the globalism, you've got to have the centralised centralization, because that's what you get with it. Just like a spider's web. There's a spider up there, actually, and sometimes he runs out and gets a fly, because he's got his web. And so he can connect with any fly that lands on his web. That's why these globalists love these networks. Anyway, global network of leading universities seeking to expand their research and teaching. Teaching what? What their globalist miasma, their, their sort of one world religion mess. Uh, teaching the, in, the, in, in the field of religion and globalization. Now, true religion cannot go hand in hand with globalization. And now I'm not going to refer to any religion from that. Well, I could easily refer to the Bible for that because, of course, sovereign rulership from the heavens by Christ is of the nations. That's what the whole Bible points us towards. The kingdom of God, which is the sovereign rulership of the nations on this world, by God, uh, you know, it's God's government, basically, through by Christ over the world and with Christ up in the heavens. It happens after the Epiphania, the last 490 years. It's talked about from throughout the entire Bible. In fact, it's the theme, really, the main theme of the Bible, which is the kingdom of God, which is not heaven floating around on a cloud. It's this world with independent nations and people having a relationship with God through Christ, actually. But anyway, the emphasis is on nations. And I can confirm that just by considering the solar system and what that's related to, which is the growth of knowledge, as I explain. And one of the fundamental things about uh, existence, spiritual existence, certainly, which is our true existence, is, having, is knowing who you are, basically. It's having identity. And you can't have identity unless you have boundaries. 
because there's no me or you unless we, we are different people in different bodies. If we're merged into some blob, we don't exist. Now they want everything to be merged in one big blob, like the Tower of Babel, which is why the, the story, you know, the, the situation in the Tower of Babel, God sent everybody in their direction to know who they are in relation to everybody else. And that's the essence of it. You know, there's no me without you. So um, you don't have globalization. Globalization and religion and God do not go together. True God, that is. They don't go together. That's it. But we know what they're doing here. We know they're trying to piggyback religion and people's propensity, in fact, to want to get on with each other. So that's what I think is going on here with this faith foundation. It's a monstrous thing as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not surprised that Welby's son has got a, um, a plum job there. I'm not surprised at all. Because, uh, like I said, Welby, ex all man Surely a globalist as well. Anyway, now, um, so that's Welby. Hey, talking of Welby, you know, the man, by the way, the globalist man, who I think he's a globalist, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the associate with, of the Church of England, of course, and him and all that, being associated with Wonga.com, the usury thing. What did Jesus do when he saw all the money changes? Exactly. Anyway, talking of Archbishop Welby, Crow, Russell Crow, here's a, here's a headline for you. Russell Crow consults the Archbishop of Canterbury, there's a picture of them there, uh, as Noah film faces criticism. Now, I'm not so, I'm, why would you ask him? I'm telling you, Russell Crow, to me, is a man, he must be misguided in some sort of way. Um, he strikes me as being a real man, you know, someone who likes his family, who likes his country, who likes liberty who likes independence what's he doing with him what's he doing with the archbishop of canterbury i'll tell you what if russell crowe wants to know about noah and everything else like that he should start his studies with i, I would suggest certainly although it's almost impossible to get a copy of the aeonian books certainly use that and and other bibles as well so you can cross-reference and get a copy of seed and bread Volume 1 and Volume 2, if you can, and read them. And uh, by Seed and Bread, Volumes 1 and 2 are by Otis T. Sellers. I'd say that. There you go, Russell. Now go and have a look at that. And while you're at it, you might as well have a look at a bit of Pembroke, Earth's earliest ages as well. That's a little bit of side study. And you'll begin to get it. You don't need to ask um, an ex or man about that. Then, anyway, moving on. So what have we got with globalisation? We've got that all linked in with, with the religions of the world, of course, which are that out there to, to deceive us and people obviously being deceived because otherwise Russell Crowe wouldn't be with the Archbishop of Canterbury. And, you know, we carry on. I carried on with my little journey through the papers today and one of the, I turned the page and there it was. Oh, vitamins. Right, it says here, th this is what it said. Vitamins. Scientists, right, you know, those great paragons of virtue... Scientists are fairly un unambiguous, fairly unambiguous for the most, for almost everybody, for almost everybody in the West. Um, almost all supplements are pointless. So basically it's saying scientists are fairly unambiguous that for, for almost everybody in the West, almost all supplements are pointless. That's what it said in this Times. You know, and don't forget, if it's a globalist affiliated paper, which I think it is, it's going to be very interested in banks, the big international banks, big pharma, big corporations, and making people weak and dependent. And so it doesn't want people to have supplements, good supplements. But then when you look at it, a, a, a quick glance of, of the, uh, the deluded, which is, you know, most people read the Times because they believe in the system, would just think, oh, they take from that, right, so, vitamins are terrible, they're, it's ridiculous, and all the jokers who have vitamin supplements, they're all mad because it's, it all says it in times. But when you read this, it goes like this, they are fairly unambiguous for almost everybody in the West, almost all supplements are pointless. So they're really, within that statement that seems so bold at first, you've got this, a, a lot of room for it not to be true. And... Um, 
the thing is, supplements, our food is so empty of nutrition that you've got to have supplements. But the problem is, you've got to be very, 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 very careful where you get your supplements from. You do not get them from the big organisations. You do not get them from big um, producers and so on. If you do, you've got to be very careful about where you get them, because so much of it is synthetic. So much of it is from GMO, right? So you've got to be very, very careful. Now, I get my supplements from somebody who actually does his best to get the best stuff, and that is from ancientpurity.com. Now, the staff there and uh, uh, are unbelievably helpful, and also the... Um, Clive DeCarl, who I think runs the whole thing, who, who has, look him up, because Clive DeCarl, De is a separate word from Carl, C-A-R-L-E, I think, and uh, he has, he, he does the health revolution on UK column. So you go to the UK column on YouTube, and you put health revolution, and you see what Clive DeCarl says about supplementation. Enormously helpful, enormously helpful anyway, if you speak to him. And, um... He, uh, he, he, what he does, he bends over backwards to get proper supplements from good sources. And that's what you get. And I have mine from there. And I don't, I don't, I don't get ill. You know, I mean, as far as I, the, the amount, I used to get colds quite regularly and things like that, and aches and pains and whatever. I do not get them anymore. And it's since having this, I feel a lot better and everything else, but uh, they obviously don't want you to feel well, and so they keep pumping this meme that vitamins are deadly. And they are deadly if you get the fake ones that are made by Big Pharma and all the big industries who are trying to over uh, take over this, but not if you get them properly sourced. So there's that I wanted to mention as well. Uh, oh yeah, here's the last thing I saw. And this is in the Times headline, fracking to go ahead under homes, even if owners object. So, they, so they're pushing this um, legislation to enable people to put their pipes, frackers, quadrilla, Lord Brown, who used to be in charge of BP. He was in charge of BP when they bought out, I think it was the Kazakhstan oil fields. And they thought that because BP were buying them, they'd get all the best technology and it'd be great for the for the jobs. I think it was Kazakhstan, they'd get all the jobs because they've got BP coming in, you've got Lord Brown, uh, who's now in something to do with the cabinet, of course, um, very close to the Prime Minister. You've got to have Lord Brown, you know, who's in charge of fracking, close to the Prime, Prime Minister, because, you know, these, these, these big um, corporations work with government, which is fascism, isn't it? Anyway, so um, Lord Brown in Kazakhstan, he was in charge of um, BP at the time, and I think it was Kazakhstan, went in there. Everyone was excited because they thought they'd get all the big technology of BP, improve the economy. But what he did was shut them all down, shut down the oil fields, shut down production, or at least closed it down. Why? In order to make oil more scarce, of course, so you can keep the prices up. Well, at least that's a conclusion I think that anyone with a reasonable understanding of these people would come to. Anyway, he's in charge of Quadrilla. And like I said, he's associated with, you know, the cabinet and so on. And um, he, here we're now, he's in charge of Qu Quadrilla does the fracking. They like to drill, uh, they like to just drill everywhere and put poisons in the, under the, under the ground. And which there has been so many cases now. Sometimes it causes earthquakes, of course, messing about like this. And sometimes it yeah, poisons the water and everything else. But they need to do this. They need to poison these things under the fake idea that we've got to get um, gas from fracking. When, of course, there's so much coal under this country. And, there was, and it was very easily accessible before it was all shut down by Margaret Thatcher. Uh, you know, coal burns beautifully. It creates nice CO2 so the plants can get strong and healthy. Do you know... If you have a greenhouse and you fill it with CO2, the plants grow really, really well because they need it for photosynthesis, which is about using the sunlight in order to, to change CO2 into oxygen, uh, which we breathe as well, and also for the plants to grow because they need the carbons in the structure. But uh, UN Gen 21 is against everything to do with carbon dioxide, of course, because when you understand what it's about, which is a total power, control, power grab of the world, 
then uh, you know why they're doing it and why they're shutting us down, why they don't want us to breathe and, what, and everything else. When you get to understand what these people are about. But anyway, fracking to go ahead under homes even if own, owners object. Re they're really pushing this so that people don't own their land anymore so, uh, but, and so that people like Quadrilla can stick their pipes under your house and squirt their deadly poisonous chemicals that are completely unnecessary to do this very unnecessary process of fracking which people don't want, but when you go and protest against it, they get all the thugs in, to, you know, from the police, so-called. Uh, and I'll tell you what, when, uh, the <laughs> anyway, they get there and they stop all the protests. People locally don't want it to happen, but they do it anyway, or they're trying to do it anyway. The good news is, ladies and gentlemen, that it's, it's easy to say, oh, they're going to go ahead. Fracking to go ahead under homes, even as owners object. No, if they object firmly enough, it will not happen. And that's, that's as simple as that. If we, th th These headlines always have this foregone conclusion, don't they? Yes, it's going to happen. It will happen. This is going to happen. No, it will only happen if we let it. And um, if we're stupid enough to let it, and if we're stupid enough not to speak out about it, um, but the good news is more and more people are realising um, what's happening and they are standing against it and they're taking people to court and and they're taking their councils to court and so on and so on, and taking the police to court, you know, and it's, it's happening. The resistance to all this, firm, very firm, polite resistance to this and legal uh, and uh, legal and completely non-violent resistance to this monster that's being forced on us is is growing exponentially it's growing so fast you talk to people in the street now they're all aware of it i was talking to a policeman today he's aware of it you know people are aware of it he's more aware than he was now because he's going to go away and look at it look up what i suggested him to look up anyway there you go i thought i'd let you know what i saw in the papers and I shall speak to you soon. Have a very good, whatever it is, length of time between now and when I put up another video. See you later. Thanks for watching.